Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Um, today we're looking at a data set of white wine quality, uh, so it's uh, just a bunch of wines, and I assume that they have been rated by experts um, to be given these ratings from 3 through 9. And um, as you can see, we have a number of features here which we'll be using to predict the output variable, which is the quality. And uh, I did a video uh, like this on a red wine data set, but this is the white, li white wine um, uh, equivalent. It, I think it has even the same features as the other one. Uh, so, yeah, let's get started. Uh, so, my guess about this is that we're not going to get such a great accuracy. If I remember correctly on the red wine data set, uh, we did not have a great accuracy. That's because, well, it's a very subjective quality. Yeah, um, the, the concept of a quality of a wine is really um, you know, different people have different opinions about that. Uh, and it's also just arbitrarily chosen, right? So, but let's see if, if maybe these sort of like chemical and uh, measurable quantifiable features can actually help predict um, the quality of a wine. So I have a task for today, uh, given data about various white wines, let's try to predict the quality of a particular wine according to experts and we'll use a TensorFlow artificial neural network to make our predictions. Um, I have our, our imports here, which are pretty standard. Uh, I think this will be a quick video. I know I've been doing like a lot of long videos, so I'll try to keep it short today. We have NumPy, Pandas, Plotly, Express for visualization. And then for um, pre-processing, we'll be using label encoder, scal standard scalar, and the train test split function from sklearn. And of course, for training, we'll use TensorFlow. So let's go ahead and load in our data using the pandas uh, pandas.readcsv and we'll grab the file path right over here, copy file path, paste it in, and oh yes, I forgot to import. <laughs> and we'll take a look at the data when that finishes. Uh, just give it one second. All right, oh, and we see that it's all in one column. That's because the delimiter is set to a comma by default. Uh, CSV stands for comma separated values, but this has been encoded with semicolons. So over here, we we'll just have to type delimiter equals semicolon. Now we have it uh, good to go. And you can see we have nearly 5,000 rows, 12 columns, one of which is our output column. And I'm just going to start um, pre processing because uh, this looks like a very clean data set. Uh, let's see if we have any nulls. Looks like zero nulls, and everything is numerical. So no encoding here, very little processing, but uh, we should be able to get it into the model uh, very soon. So let me just print out, uh, just so that we can know for sure. That the total null values uh, will be data.isna.sum.sum. So I'm acr summing across rows and columns to get the total number. And we just put a colon there. We have zero null values in total. And everything is in numerical form. So we can get right into uh, scaling the data. Um, there is one little thing to note. Uh, TensorFlow, if you're using um, numerical classes, they have to go from zero to some number. Uh, we, I think this starts at three and goes to nine. Just check that. So data. Uh, y, no, no, it's data sub quality dot unique. You can see we have three, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So TensorFlow will reject this. So what we have to do is we'll make a label encoder that's just going to re, it's just going to shift them down all by three, right? So data sub quality uh, equals the same thing. Well, actually, encoder dot fit transform data sub quality. And if we want to get a sense of what it's been mapped to, we can make a dictionary that maps an index to a label. For every index label pair, in enumerate uh, encoder dot classes. So classes is just a list of the um, encoded classes, but in the order that they were encoded. So if we enumerate them, we'll get the corresponding new values. And we 
I, what's the problem here? Oh, in, I forgot in, okay. And you can see, um, so three has been mapped to zero, four has been mapped to one, five has been mapped to two, all the way up to nine being mapped to six. So now our values take on uh, zero through six. And uh, with that, we can start, we can just split our data and scale it. So Y is going to be data sub quality, so just the quality column. And X will be data dot drop quality. And we're dropping it from axis one, which is the column axis. Then we're just going to scale X with the standard scalar from sklearn. So that's going to give it mean zero and variance one. So X equals scalar dot fit transform X. And I'll, why don't, just to show you what it's doing, we'll turn it back into a data frame and set the columns uh, equal to the way they were. So we can take a look, and you can see X is now the same thing as it was before. I mean, it doesn't have the quality column, but it's all been scaled so that each column has a mean of zero and unit variance. And that's good. Now we can split it into a train and test set. So X train, X test, Y train, Y test equals train test split, X, Y, with a train size of 70%. All right, whoops, uh, good. Now we'll take a look. Uh, actually, we're just gonna take a look at the shape. So I'm gonna call this modeling and training. We're gonna take a look at the shape of X, of our input. So we have uh, 4,898 examples and 11 features. Uh, and let's look at how many, uh, sorry, y.unique. This is how many classes we have. So this is num classes, this is num features. So I could even write it that way. Num features equals x dot shape sub one for the columns. And num classes equals uh, the length of the unique values in y. So run those. And yeah, I'll just print it. All right, um, so we're gonna go and make our model now. So we're gonna make an input layer with uh, TensorFlow using tf.keras.input. Uh, we're gonna specify the shape to be a vector of length num features. And then our first hidden layer, we'll just make it a uh, dense layer with 64 activations and an activation function of ReLU, passing in inputs here. Then uh, we'll pass in, we'll make it another duplicate of that one, but we'll pass in X. And then for our output layer, we will just make another dense layer, but we'll have uh, num classes activations, right? And here we'll have an activation function of softmax to get probability values, passing in X. And then we'll make our model. So model will be tf.keras.model, passing in inputs and outputs. All right, now we'll compile our model. And we'll use the atom optimizer. Uh, we use sparse categorical cross entropy for the loss function. And uh, for the metrics, We'll use accuracy. Um, now, we'll create. We'll set up a batch size and an epochs. I think 32 for batch size. We'll just train for 100 in epochs, uh, and then uh, we'll fit our model and store its uh, history in history variable. Model dot fit. So we're training it on the train set x train y train. Give it a validation split of 20%. And then feed in the batch size and epochs. I'll specify. All right, and that should be good. Let's train it. And I misspelled optimizer. It's, I always do this. <laughs> Put the I there. All right.
And you can see from this, it looks like we're just touching 60, barely getting at 60%. I also uh, realized I should probably give this a random state, random state, so that we can reproduce the results. Uh, how about 34 today? So I'll just retrain it with that. And yeah, we're, we're around 50 to 60% uh, accuracy, which is like not so good, right? Now I want to see something. I want to see how, well actually first let's evaluate it on the test set, see, get some sort of like final measure of how it's doing. And yeah, we have actually 58%, so not so good. Um, I But I want to try to get a better uh, model here. And you know, there's a few things I can do um, to try to optimize the model, but I think overall the task is just a little um, weird. Like, for example, here, let me show you. Um, y dot value counts. So this is the number of wines that are in each category. And uh, what's so weird is that like we have five wines in this one. So it's almost like anomaly detection at this point. There's such it's it's just such a, a like a random occurrence. A, a out of a eight uh, five thousand examples, five of them belong to a the highest quality. And it doesn't seem like you know, this accuracy isn't even reflecting that. It's just reflecting overall classification. So if it's having a hard time getting them into the into these categories, how is it going to figure that out? It just seems like there's a, a weak connection between um, the uh, features and the quality. And you know, I, why don't, I didn't do this earlier. Let me actually, let me see what it looks like. Let me see the correlations between these. That will give us some sense of what's going on. So I'm going to import uh, Seaborn. Uh, let me put it up here. Okay, and then let's... Uh, create a correlation matrix, so we'll call core is going to be data.correlation.core. Uh, okay, and then we will create a new figure. Give it a fig size of, I think 12 by 10 works pretty well. Uh, and then sns.heatmap core turn annotations, set the uh, the bounds of the uh, correlation values, and I think that should be good. Oh, show. I never import a map plot. Uh, hold on. All right. So I'm trying to see um, the quality. Okay, I'm looking for any like really high correlations here, and it looks like the amount of no, why, whoa. Looks like the out of out of all of the features, the ones that that are most strongly correlated with the quality of the wine are is how much alcohol is in it. And that's it. That's really it, and it's 0.44. That's <laughs> well. You can always say, okay, maybe th there's some combination of these features that will give us a, a good prediction of the quality. But based on the model's performance, it, it seems like that's just not true. It seems like the quality is sort of arbitrarily defined. Like it's not really a quantitative measure. The quality is is very subjective, and um. I think maybe we should what we should do is restructure the task a little. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to categorize these wines into seven different categories, right? But it just seems like a, a bit of an ambitious task. Uh, I think we we could do uh, we could do pretty well if we restructure the task at least better. Um, so restructure the task. Why don't we? Here, let's try quantile splitting 
the outputs into two categories high quality lines and low quality ones. This should give us a better accuracy. What I'm going to do is try to take these, um, these seven, seven uh, categories and I'm going to quantile cut them. So here I'll show you. Let's uh, so we have here. Let me use data sub quality here. I'll put this down here. Data sub quality value counts. And now if I do okay, so if I if I use the pandas dot q cut function, this is a quantile cut, which will cut the values and discretize them. This works best with um continuous values so that you can put you can bin the values but it will work here as well the only problem is we won't be able to exactly split them we'll, we'll have to account for some um, some skew in the classes because we're not able to split into a class like we can't we can't tell the difference between two different lines in a quality for category if this were a continuous uh, value which would be even harder to to, to uh, it would be even more arbitrary at that point, right? Uh, but then we'd be able to get a f perfect 50-50 split between the values. But I'm going to quantile cut the quality column, and I'm gonna the quantiles will be two, so we're cutting right right down the middle as well as we can, and we're gonna give it labels zero and one, so we don't have to even label and code, right? All right, so what that looks like is this. It's showing us zero is less than one, and for um, for any here, let me uh, basic quality looks like this, right? So anything with a relatively low quality is going to go into zero, and anything with a relatively high quality is going to go into one. Uh, and to show you the difference here, we're going to look at the value counts of this. And you can see now we only have two categories. Uh, 4,000 of them almost are in zero and 1,000 are in one. And this is what I'm saying, like the reason we can't get perfect 50-50 split here is because um, we have to split the categories in half. So these are probably going into high, uh, sorry, uh, four, five, and six, I think. Four and above is gonna be high and anything under that is going to be uh, one. Uh, I mean, sorry, low. So one is high, zero is low. But can I sort this? Is this I don't like that this. Uh... Okay, I guess that sort of shows us what we want to see. See what I'm what I when I'm doing is I'm splitting it here. Um, but like I have to either split it here or split it here, and either way it's going to be skewed. So that's why we can't have the fifty-fifty split. But this should uh, serve as a good. Uh, this should serve as a proper uh, task for our purposes. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new y and x, and I'm just gonna overwrite the variables here. Should be okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna make this y going to be not the value counts, but the splitted version of the old y, of the old quality column. So just what we saw before. And then x will be data.drop quality. All right, and I'm just gonna grab, I'm just gonna copy paste everything from, from before. So we have the scaling, we're scaling X the same way as before. We're gonna train test split the same way as before. And we're gonna train the same way as before. Number of features, number of classes, oh, num classes has to change, right? So num classes is now gonna be two. Hmm, actually one, it should be one. You know what, I'm just gonna completely remove that. I'm just gonna hard code one right in here. And I'm gonna change this to sigmoid because now it's a binary classification task. So um, everything else will work. I think, all right, so let's train. Oh, what happened? Oh. What? But I passed 
Uh, oh, I might. Hold on. Y looks like this: zeros and ones. So if I if I split it, then Y train should be zeros and ones, right? Yeah. So what's the problem? Oh, oh, I get it. Okay, this should not be uh, sparse categorical, but uh, binary. Wait, is it sp it's binary cross entropy? Okay. All right. And it looks like we are doing better, getting 74 or something. Uh, let me, I realize I didn't actually plot the results. So why don't I do that? So results, no, <laughs> now with the question mark. Uh, I'll just make a new plot, a plotly express figure. Line, which will be a line chart and it will draw from history.history, .history, which is this thing here. Uh, and y will be loss and val loss. So we're plotting the loss over the number of epochs. Labels will be, I will map x to epoch, and y will go to loss. For our title, uh, loss over time. All right, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to train this whole thing again. This isn't really the best way to do it. I feel like, um, like doing it with the same variable names so that I I'm forced to do it in order here. So, because I know I realized I didn't actually like like this model is probably overfitting pretty bad because I'm doing a a hundred epochs. So let's take a look. At this one, it's oh, I have to fig dot show. And what happened? Oh, no comma. Okay. Yeah, it, it's overfitting, right? The val the validation loss is going back up. So something that really helps with this, um, especially when you have this sort of jagged, jumping stochastic look, uh, we can just pass use this callback function. Uh, which is tf.keras.callbacks.reduce learning rate on plateau. And what that'll do is it'll just allow us to converge much, much more cleanly into a, uh, into a minimum. All right, now we can look. When that's done, right, how long is that? Oh, we're done, okay. You can see now it's like completely plateaued. Like, so it found a local uh, local minimum. Hopefully not, but found some minimum, and the learning rate got so small that it just like stuck in there, and it's not moving. It's not budging. Uh, and okay, so let's take a look now. We had 58. Ah, eh, same thing, right? All right, so now let's try it with this. Uh. Right, so I'm just going through here. Wait, I want to change. I want to add that callback function on here as well. That should be in quotes. All right. And it's interesting. Huh. I did run this, right? Alright, I'm going to get a plot lead graph for this as well. <laughs> Chasing it. Alright, there we go. This should be done soon. Seven eighty. Looks like we, yeah, we converged to a much nicer value. Uh, model dot evaluate x test y test. Now we've actually have eighty three percent. So you can see um, by by restructuring the task. So where is it? 
we had 57% on a very difficult task. Whereas we simplified the task, um, made it more like sort of uh, okay. I don't know what, what the word is. It's um, It makes more sense. Trying to qual qual uh, say is a wine good or bad rather than saying is a wine this good, this good, this good. You know, it's 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 much more. Um, it makes more sense to take this kind of approach to the problem. And so we ended up with a much higher accuracy, but at the at the cost of not uh, doing the original task. We had to change the task. So that's okay. Um, I know this was, well, I tried to make this video shorter. It ended up running 25 minutes, but uh, I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell, and uh, leave any comments in the section below. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.